Alright, thanks for watching. So have you ever wondered what it means to live in 3D or what a dimension is? Today I will answer your question. So intuitively, that living in 3D means that we live in three different directions. Because what can you do? You can go forward and backward, that's one direction. You can go left and right, I hope that's the correct way. Or you can also go up and down. So there are three different directions and any point you want to go to, you can express with those three different directions. And in linear algebra, this is what's called a basis. So just a quick definition. A basis, beta, and technically it deals with vector spaces, which I won't go into now, for a vector space V. It's simply a linearly independent set that spans V. Again, today I'll try to keep it non-technical. So linearly independent means the directions are distinct in the following way. For example, the following set is linearly dependent. 1, 0, 0 and 2, 0, 0. And that's because this 2, 0, 0 is kind of redundant because 2, 0, 0, it's 2 times 1, 0, 0. So in other words, in terms of our knowledge, Anything we can express with 1, 0, 0, we can also express with 2, 0, 0. So if you eliminate this vector, you still have the same amount of information. And this makes sense. Basically, the direction 1, 0, 0 is really the same as the direction 2, 0, 0. And span means any vector can be written in terms of those directions. So for example, this set, 1, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0, and I don't know, 0, 0, 1, and then uh, 1, 1, 1, and then I don't know, 2, 2, 3, or something, 2, 3, 4, in fact, etc., etc. It spans R3. Because any point you want, you can write this in terms of those uh, five vectors. Obviously, notice those are redundant. So in some sense, a basis is a very efficient set. It's one that expresses all the information we have, but with an efficient number of vectors. And I'm sure there's some data science application of this. So for an example of a basis is then 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. You see? Because any, vet, any point, you can express it in terms of those three vectors, and they're not redundant. So this is a basis. And this, if you want, you can think of this as being the forward-backward direction. This is the left-right direction, and this is the up-down direction. And in fact, this is the you know, XYZ plane you're used to. You see, this is the x direction, forward, backward. This is the left, right direction. This is the up, down direction. But of course, bases are not unique. So we have also 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. Also a basis. You can show that any element you can express it in terms of those vectors and they're linearly independent so it's very nice they're not redundant at all so this is also a basis so the thing is bases they're not unique you can have different bases for the same space but notice how many elements does this have three how many does this have three so it turns out they match and it turns out the number of vectors in any basis is always the same. And this number we call the dimension. Definition. Dimension of V is the number of vectors in any basis 
of V. For example, what is the, so what does it mean to live in three dimension? We live in R3, right? Points X, Y, Z. Well, the dimension of three space is precisely three. And to do that, let's find a basis for R3, which we have found, and let's just count the number of elements. So because 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 is a basis, and it has three elements. And that kind of makes sense. As I said, in R3, there are three directions, forward, backward, left, right, up, down, and that's precisely expressed by this fact that we have a basis with three elements. Okay, which of course begs the question, how do we know that any basis has the same number of vectors? And this is a very non-trivial fact, but let me just outline it. So it turns out there are two issues here. So issues? Well, first of all, how do we know any space has a basis? So does there exist a basis? A basis? And it turns out the answer is yes. And this is a, there's a video on that where I show that every vector space, even infinite, has a basis. And the, that proof uses Swan's lemma, which is non-trivial. Um, but it turns out if you have a finite set that spans your vector space, it's not too bad because essentially take this set, which spans R3, and just remove redundant vectors until you have a set without redundant vectors. So if you remove this, it's gone. If you remove this, it's gone. But then for this set, you cannot remove any vectors anymore. And it turns out because of this, it's a basis. So existence of a basis, that's not a big issue. What's more important is, do any two bases have the same number of elements? Do any two bases have the same number of elements. Of elements? And it turns out the answer is also yes. And by the way, why is that an issue? Suppose you have a basis with three elements and then a basis with four elements. What's the dimension? Is it three? Is it four? I don't know. And this is also true by a non-trivial result called the replacement theorem, for which I've done a video also proving this fact. Namely, if Lin is a linearly independent set, subset of V, and again finite, so suppose you have a finite linearly independent subset, and Gen is a spanning subset, so a set which spans V, then it turns out any linearly independent subset is always smaller than a generating subset. Then lin is less or equal to gen. And this is really the core of our dimension because uh, how do we show that two bases have the same number of elements? Well, again, this is finite for infinite. Well, it's true because they're all infinite, but I wonder if probably cardinality-wise it's also true. So, so let's answer two. So suppose beta and beta prime, or beta and gamma, are two bases of V. And let me simplify the proof. So the, uh, whole, the, the whole case, I've done it in the replacement theorem video. But again, here, since I want to keep it non-technical, uh, let's uh, do that. So let's suppose we have two finite bases. So it's possible that they're infinite. 
So let beta and gamma be two finite bases of V. Then the point is you just use this theorem with lin be beta and gen be gamma. Because you see, a basis is linearly independent and also spans. So beta is linearly independent and gamma spans. And then what you get is the number of elements in lin is less than or equal to the number of elements in gen. So beta has fewer elements than gamma. But then you can reverse this. Let lin be gamma, gen be beta, and then you get, again still, the number of elements in lin is less than or equal to the number of elements in gen, so gamma has fewer elements than beta, and then now it's no more debate, huh? uh, and you get that beta has the same number of elements as gamma, so indeed, any two uh, Bases have to have the same number of elements, and this is why dimension is well defined. And this is why, from now on, you can say I truly live in the third dimension. How cool is that? All right, I hope you like this little non-technical excursion. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.